morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Holy Spirit Anglican Church. Good to see you here. I'd like to welcome those at home as well as we continue marching through Advent toward Christmas Day. Uh, looking in your bulletin, you'll see several announcements. I won't read them all, just highlight them. Our annual parish meeting for all members of the church will be following the 10 o'clock service this morning. There'll be a very brief break to set up. You'll, you'll get a chance to catch your breath. We, we encourage you to stay or, or come back in from the fellowship hall so we can have our business meeting. It's going to be very important. We'll be electing two members to the vestry and also reviewing, updating the bylaws. So it's a very important meeting. Hope you all can stay. Non-members are welcome to stay and observe, or you can just go home and let the rest of us sweat it out. <laughs> Wednesday morning Bible study will not be taking place on December 22nd or 29th because of the holidays. Uh, be sure to read the announcement about Christian about Christmas poinsettias. There's also an insert in your bulletin to fill out for that. The cost is $10. Just uh, clearly mark your check so we know that that's your intention. There's Advent devotionals on the back table. They were delayed because of some problems with, with FedEx, but they're finally out there and, and available for you. Our Christmas Eve service is on Christmas Eve, <laughs> which is Friday the 24th of December at 6.30. And again, hope you all be here. That, that will be live cast, but we'd like to have a good full building here as well as the live cast. And the announcement about the family in need is extremely important. We are reaching out in love to a family that's at, at the Penelope House, which is a domestic violence shelter. And um, the list of what's needed is on the bulletin board on your left as you come in, or actually as you leave, it's on your left. And if you stop and look at that, you'll, you'll see what's needed. Just sign up and bring it. And if you have questions about that, just find Mary or Al, and they know all the answers to all of that. <laughs> And I believe that's all of our announcements. This time I encourage you to draw your hearts toward worship as we have our Advent candle reading. We use the Advent week this time of year to help us celebrate four Sundays preceding Christmas Day. The first two candles on our Advent week remind us of the hope we have in salvation through Jesus and the peace God has established with him. To you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Oh, 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 oh,
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Emmanuel, be with us. Holy Spirit, come. O Lord Jesus Christ, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation. Grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient toward the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found a people acceptable in your sight. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors and I will save the lame and gather the outcast. And I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in. At the time when I gather you together. For I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is from Psalm 85. We will read it responsively by half verse. Lord, you have been gracious to your land. You have turned away the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the offense of your people. And covered all their sins. You have taken away all your displeasure. That your people may rejoice in you. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. I will hearken to what the Lord God will say. For he shall speak peace unto his people and to his saints that they turn not again. For his salvation is near to those who fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall flourish out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Indeed, the Lord shall show goodness, and the land shall give its increase. Righteousness shall go before him, and he shall direct his going in the land. Glory be to the Testament reading today is from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, 
but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of today's gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord Christ. Christ. John said, Therefore to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then shall we do? And he answered them, Whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none, and whoever has food is to do likewise. Tax collectors and whoever ha tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than you are authorized to do. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what shall we do? And he said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or by false accusation, all saying, I baptize you with water. But he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn 
with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father and God, we ask again this morning, open ears, open hearts, and an open Bible. Let the truth of your word just settle deep within us, Lord God. Challenge us, comfort us, transform us to be more like your son Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Looking in the gospel which was just read for us this morning, we can see pretty quickly that John the Baptist was not a politically correct person, to put it mildly. He did not have test groups to see how his message would be received. He listened to God and he proclaimed what God told him. He let the chips fall where they may. Um, looking there in our text at John, excuse me, Luke 3 and verse 7. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. You brood of vipers. In modern English, flatly, he said, you bunch of snakes. Um, have you ever seen the greatest story ever told? Um, Charlton Heston plays John the Baptist. He played a lot of good characters, a few bad. And... Um, the scene of John's arrest is horrendous. In my opinion, probably the worst scene in any religious movie ever. Uh, go to YouTube, look it up. John the Baptist arrested, greatest story ever told. It's worth a watch. In it, the soldiers are coming to arrest John. And as they come down, Charlton Heston playing John grabs the soldiers violently dunks them under the water while he's screaming, repent. He grabs one after another, dunking them and dunking them and screaming, repent, repent. It's, it's horrible. And it's way beyond unlikely. It, it just didn't happen that way. We know it. But it's not totally a waste because it portrays for us somewhat two things. One, the wildness of John's character. He was out there. Dressing in camel skins wasn't the common thing for people that day. Eating locusts and honey was not a common practice. There was not a group of people who got together and did that. John was an outlier. And John was extreme. Prophets tended to be extreme. They tended to be unbalanced. They showed that common human tendency. Balance is a rare thing within humanity. We tend to be on, on balance. We would go to one extreme or the other. And sadly, you look at our current political cl climate and you see the anasis. It often overflows into the church, which is tragic. 
But God sometimes uses that. John was still young. He was very He is a God of love, but he's also a God of justice and holiness. And he is angry at sin. If John the Baptist ran into our modern preachers who said that God is never angry at you, he may have grabbed them and dunked them under the water and screamed, repent. He definitely would have told them to repent and probably would have called them a brood of vipers because he knew they were proclaiming an unbalanced message that was in error. John's message was unbalanced, but it was necessarily so. Repent. Looking on, he told him to bear fruits in keeping with re repentance. In other words, put your money where your mouth is. Let your shoe leather show what you say you believe. Live it. Don't just say it. Let your actions, your words, your attitudes be shaped by the faith that you profess. That is repentance. Fruits in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham for our father. For I tell you, God is able to raise up from these stones children for Abraham. In claiming Abraham as their father, the Jews who tried to hide behind that were, were doing two things. One, they were claiming that their nationality is all that God really was concerned about. And that wasn't so. And it's still not so. Being a citizen of the modern state of Israel does not get anyone into heaven. Being a citizen of the United States of America does not get anyone into heaven. The ancient Jews were God's chosen people. We're not as a nation. As a church, we are. Because by extension through Christ, we also are children of Abraham. God has raised up from the stones, being Gentiles, children for Abraham through the Messiah, through Christ. But they were trusting in their nationality and they're trusting in their church relationship. We go to synagogue and three times a year we go to the temple. That makes us good Jews, that makes us all right. We might say, well, we've been baptized. And being baptized is good. In fact, normally it is an essential part of obedience. If you haven't been baptized, you need to be baptized. But baptism without the heart repentance is just getting wet. <laughs> baptism with repentance and faith it is a powerful sacrament that brings the grace of God to bear on the person being baptized. The heart is essential. Bring fruits in keeping with, with repentance. It's not enough to say, but God, I'm an Anglican. Or I'm a Baptist, or I'm a Pentecostal, or, or I'm Roman Catholic, or Greek Orthodox. I suspect if someone were to stand before the pearly gates and say that they, they might hear, well, that's nice. But what did you do with my son Jesus? That's what matters. Labels have some importance, but again, the label alone won't get you into heaven. If you're a... Anglican who's been baptized and you haven't repented, again, you're just a wet Anglican. And that's not enough. Bear fruits in keeping with repentance. Let your heart be changed by the Holy Spirit to the point it shows. We're saved by faith alone, but saving faith never stands alone. True saving faith is always connected with repentance and repentance, inflamed by the Holy Spirit, brings a transformation in the way we think, in, in the values we hold, in our heart. And when the heart is changed, our language will change. Our attitudes will change. Our behavior will change. Now, that doesn't mean that we become perfect. Don't let Satan lay it on you that because you're perfect, you, because you're not perfect, that means you're not saved. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You won't be perfect until you see Jesus face to face. Once you see him as he is, you shall be like him. Like 1 John 3, 3 tells us. But until then, we're all a work in progress. But works in progress need to bear fruits in keeping with repentance. Verse 9 there in Luke 3. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees.
Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. That's serious stuff. Verse 10, and the crowds asked him, hang on there. Right now, there's not just one sermon being preached. Some of you are hearing what I think I'm going to say. Some are hearing what I actually say. But most of you are also unconsciously adding some interpretation. But fortunately, as Christians in this setting, there's something else going on. The Holy Spirit is taking his word as, as it's spoken, and he's applying it to each of our hearts. Because we each need to hear something different. I can't tailor it that well, but he can. So John's message was hard. Repent. You're wrong here. Straighten it out. No room. Just do it right. And that was right. And that's part of the message that, that we need to get. But we know there's more to it than that. Looking in our Old Testament reading. This is a strange Sunday because we get the law from the gospel and we get the gospel from the Old Testament reading and the psalm. Looking there in Zephaniah chapter 3. Mike, you did a fantastic job re reading that. That's how that passage needs to be read. D did you hear the joy as Mike was reading that? I did. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. Why should they be joyful? Because some of them had listened to the message that John was going to preach before John ever preached it. They had repented. They were making their hearts right. They were allowing the Lord to give them power to live right, to speak right, to think right. They had reason for joy. When we're allowing the Lord to work in us, in, in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our imperfection, we can have times of rejoicing because God is at work. And we have the promise from Philippians that he who began a good work in you will complete it to the day of Christ Jesus. It will happen. Excuse me a moment. I promise that's only warm water. <laughs> Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. This is what worship always needed to have as part of what happens. Now, there needs to be solemn times of pouring out tears before God because we failed. And it's okay to have times in worship where there is grief. Grief of what's happened in your life, in your family, in, in our nation. We should grieve over the millions of unborn children that have been slaughtered in our nation and still are. And it's right to pray against that. It's right to work against that. But there's more to the Christian life. There needs to be times of grieving, times of sadness. But there needs to be times of great exaltation and joy in our worship. Now, Advent, like Lent, focuses more on the repentance side. But this Sunday is a Sunday where there is joy in the midst of the Advent repentance. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. We know the cross. The resurrection, the coming of our King Jesus a second time. Rejoice. Going on in verse 15, the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. And that was true for them, but it's more true for us. As New Testament believers, we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. We are indwelt by the Lord Jesus Christ. When we come together, there is a sense of the Lord's presence here that is unique, that does not happen the rest of the week. Oh, he's with us all through the week. But you get two or three together, and then 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or more. And there is a unique presence of God that we need to rejoice in. The Lord is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. On that day you shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion. Let not your hands grow weak. Let not your hands grow weak. You see, the presence of God we experience on Sunday morning...
I'll say over and over again until you get tired of hearing it. It's not just that we can have a glory party as we worship and take the Lord's Supper. I mean, that's good. But that's not the only purpose. Going on in verse 17. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. There is a chorus based on that verse from the King James Version. And if I had a voice this morning, I would have had my guitar ready to lead you in that chorus. I don't, so you're lucky I won't. <laughs> but it's powerful. Again, God is in your midst. And look who is there. He's a mighty one who will save. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Don't fear the devil. He's powerful. He's so much more powerful than you. But he's such a wimp next to God. He's a defeated foe. God is a mighty one in your midst who will save. And look at the next phrase there in verse 17. God will rejoice over you with gladness. God will rejoice over you with gladness. He will exult over you with loud singing. The picture I see there is a mighty bearded warrior. Bigger than the Incredible Hulk. Who scoops you up in his arms like a father and holds you and looks at you and his heart beats with love and joy. This is my child. There is my image and likeness growing in this one. You know, let's be honest, some of our joy over our children is we see a little bit of ourselves in them. Some of God's joy over you is he sees himself in you. He created you. And if you're in Christ, he's reshaping you in the image and likeness of his beloved son, Jesus Christ. He will rejoice over you. Is God ever angry at you? Yeah. But guess what? His settled heart towards you in Christ is rejoicing over you with gladness, exulting over you with loud singing. Robin Mark has a song, um, Garment of Praise. It starts off just a nice lilting little melody about putting on garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And then it suddenly breaks into a wild Celtic reel. Um, da -da 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 and the, when you hear that, suddenly, I don't know about you, but my feet start trying to move. It makes you want to dance. When God is looking at you, he hears that in his mind, and as, as though he's holding you, and he's holding you safe while he is dancing around with joy. This is my beloved that my son has saved, that the spirit is shaping him to be like my son, and someday, even though you're struggling, you are going to be like Jesus. And God rejoices in that. Someone has said that God has your picture in his wallet. Well, let's, let's update the, uh, look just a bit. God has your picture on his cell phone. <laughs> you ever see grandparents sit around and pull up their cell phones and show pictures of their grandkids? God's got your picture on his cell phone. Hey, Michael, the Archangel, look at this one. Look at this one. Look at Mary. Look at Kay. Look at Dick. Look at these folks. They're becoming more like Jesus. He will exult with you with loud singing. And tuck in between those two phrases about God's joy, he will quiet you by his love. Sometimes life is anxiety producing. It shakes us up. God knows that. If you tune your ears to the right channel, at those times you'll hear the voice of the Father who loves you drawing near and whispering in his deep, powerful voice, Fear not. I am with you. He will quiet you by his love. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival. Verse 18 so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time, I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast. I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth.
while we are struggling and sin still has a toehold in our lives, there's times we feel shame. Times we do that at that time. And he still chose to bring me to faith in Christ. He still chose to work in my heart after that sin and bring me to full repentance. Even before I repented, after salvation, I was his. Your sin doesn't break your relationship with God. It impairs your fellowship. It does not break your relationship. And he will change your shame into praise. How does that happen? How does shame become praise? Because when we stand before the cosmos and our sin is painfully revealed, that's only the first step. The next step is, but look at what I did in them after that. In spite of the shame, in spite of the weakness, in spite of what they did again and again and again, I love them. And the grace of God and Jesus Christ transformed them into this glorious being standing before you then. Brothers and sisters, it does not appear what we shall be. If it did, this room would be flooded with so much glorious light, you'd be blinded. Because we are spiritual moons. You've looked at the moon on a dark night, and you've appreciated the light that it gives. And you know how much light the moon has? Zero. None. But it reflects the light of the sun. We are spiritual moons that as we allow the Holy Spirit to rub off, rub off our rough spots, we reflect the glory of God. And in eternity, those rough spots will be totally gone. We shall see him as he is and, and we shall be like him. And we shall perfectly reflect the glory of God. You just don't know what you're going to be. Verse 20, at that time I will bring you in at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among the peoples of the earth. When I restore your fortune before your eyes, says the Lord. That was spoken to Israel about what God would do for that nation. He's done it. He will do it. But we carry that further to what he's going to do for the, all the children of Abraham, which includes us, the church. The time will come when, before the entire universe, angels Glorious angels fallen. The glory of God in the church will be seen. And we will be not the ragtag bunch that we really are right now. Sorry, we are. But what we're headed for is to be a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. Washed in the blood of the Lamb. On that day, the universe will look at us. And they'll see the glory of Jesus Christ because what he has done through the cross, through his resurrection, through the working of his Holy Spirit, through the faithful ministry of his word made alive by the Spirit. Right now at this moment, the Holy Spirit is moving in every heart, hearing his word and doing some of that rubbing off of the rough edges. You might feel it, you might not feel it. The good news is it doesn't depend on your feelings, it depends on his faithfulness. Your feelings come and you go. You get a head cold and you feel horrible. But you know what? God loves you then. Some might be listening to this laying in a hospital bed. And God loves you there. He's with you there. His love will not fail you even there. Get your ear tuned. Quiet down everything else. Listen carefully. And hear the voice of your father saying, fear not, I am with you, I will never leave you. Let him open your spiritual senses and realize that underneath are the everlasting arms. He's holding you. He's looking at you and he's seeing you as you are, but he's looking beyond that to seeing you as you're becoming and as you will be. And he's exulting over you with joy. Because he who begun a good work in you is going to complete it in the day of Christ Jesus when he comes again. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
The Lord your God in the midst of you is mighty. And we're going to proclaim his greatness as we confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Please stand. We're on page 127 of the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, in the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Foley, our Archbishop, and Neil, our Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and the congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Be with them, Father. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially our President Joe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any yes. other adversity. Especially we ask for divine healing for Allison Woodrow, William McKelvey, Pam Garner, Kathy Morin, and Mary Alice McKelvey. We ask God's protection upon the members of the armed forces. For the Holy Spirit cycle of prayer for this week, we lift Jeffrey and Karen Smith, Deborah Spay, Jamie and Amy Tillman, Nate, Cole, Ellie, Kate, and Emma Claire. We lift Father Frank and his family, Diane, Zion, Michael, and Shava, and for myself. We pray today for the vestry members as they guide the affairs of this parish and as we seek to reflect the love of Christ Jesus to those we encounter in our daily lives. And we ask God's wisdom and presence for our meeting this morning. Yes, Father. We lift Bishop Neal and Marcia, bishops and the Bishop Search Committee, 
and vocations to ordain ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who, do, who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving let us pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ himself, it's more blessed to give than to receive as you share your offerings.
is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. And of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great glory to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn and proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we have sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he likewise after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, "Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me." Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. 
sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him and bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the of heaven. The blood of Christ, a cup of salvation. We invite all baptized believers to come and by faith receive the grace of God. If you're not baptized, you're not ready to receive for any reason, still come. Cross your arms across your chest and we'll pray a blessing upon you. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. Lord, we pray for your grace to be with our sister Donna. Strengthen her, comfort her, your peace fill her. In Jesus' name, amen. The body of Christ, the blood of heaven. 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 Father, may your peace, your grace.
This is your struggle. Please, my brother. In Jesus' name, amen. The body of Christ, the word of heaven. I invite those of you at home who are unable to take Holy Communion with us to share the prayer for spiritual communion. And also any who live in Mobile, if you desire to receive communion in your homes, reach out and let us know that either by email or a phone call or a message on Facebook and we'll be glad to bring communion by to you. Let's share the prayer for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, gathered around every altar of your church. And I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand.
listen closely, you might hear angels say, of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.